Have you ever had that day when you just felt totally drained out of energy? Well, many devices around you can feel the same way. So maybe next time before you smash your alarm clock because it didn't wake you up on time, you should think if it just maybe has run out of energy. How to prevent it? I'm Vitek and I'm here to tell you all about it. Whenever you want to use an electric device, you need some source of energy. Usually it's power outlet. It delivers constant and stable power without limitations. The main drawback is the fact that your device must be connected directly all the time. If you want to feel free, you need more mobile solution. That's where batteries come to use, right? Well, technically it was all the way around. Batteries were invented before power plants. It was much easier to experiment on small cells than huge buildings with turbines. It's year 1800. Quite lazy Italian scientist Alessandro Volta has just come with the simplest idea possible. He put together two metal discs, one copper, one zinc, and separated them with rags soaked in salt water. That's it! And yet he invented first ever battery cell. Later, of course, that idea was modified to fulfill more and more needs, but the basic concept still is as simple as over 200 years ago. The battery cell contains two electrodes, positive cathode and negative anode, and is filled with electrolytes storing ions between them. Electrons created in chemical process travel from negative to positive through your device, delivering power. Pretty simple, right? In modern zinc batteries, copper was replaced with carbon. Also, we no longer use liquid as electrolyte. Instead, since second half of 19th century, manufacturers fill them with paste moist enough to allow current to flow. But be careful, despite their name, they can leak if left in device after running out of power. Even after many modifications and upgrades, zinc batteries still weren't as efficient as people needed. That's why in 1950s one of engineers at EverReady invented alkaline battery. In alkaline cells, in place of carbon cathode and zinc cup, two separated pastes are used to increase conductivity. One is mixture of manganese dioxide and carbon powder and acts as cathode, while the anode is made of zinc dust mixed with potassium hydroxide. This combination increases its lifespan up to 7 years. Additionally, alkaline batteries can withstand more extreme temperatures from minus 30 to plus 70 degrees Celsius and have higher energy density. So, if alkaline batteries are better in every way, why bother with zinc? Well, zinc carbon cells are much cheaper to make and have better application in devices that drain the current very slowly, for example clocks, small toys or radios, while alkaline are more appropriate for remote controls, wireless transmitters and complicated moving toys. Keep that in mind when choosing your batteries. Because zinc and alkaline batteries come in the same sizes and voltage, there is an easy way to tell them apart. Just carefully read its name. For example, standard R6 cell, or as most of us call it, pen light battery, in the alkaline version is marked with letter L. It's easy to remember L because it lasts longer. In the batteries section at tme.eu there is a brief reminder at the bottom of the page. Take a look at it if you ever get confused. Even that there are many sizes and shapes, most common batteries provide only 1.5 volt. So how to achieve higher voltage? Well, name battery didn't come from nowhere. In military term, battery means a group of many guns like cannons or rocket launchers. Same goes for electric batteries. Two or more combined electrochemical cells can provide multiplied voltage. Despite similarity in name, please avoid building battery-operated cannons. Some devices require stable output voltage and flat discharge characteristics, for example pocket calculators, wristwatches or multimeters. And if you want them to work, you need to pay with pure silver! Well, silver oxide to be more specific. 
button batteries, because that's what I'm talking about, are most commonly based on combination of silver oxide cathode and zinc anode with potassium hydroxide electrolyte. Keep in mind that in opposite to pen light batteries, here the flat side is positive. In case you forgot, there is always a symbol on one side. Not all battery cells are useless when they run out of power. Some of them are rechargeable. For example, that one inside the device you're watching this video on. The lithium-ion batteries provide the longest and most efficient power and, after discharge, they can be restored to original state in no time thanks to modern chargers. When not in use, they can store electricity for 10 or even 20 years. To keep your smartphone or laptop battery in good shape, try avoiding draining it all out and charging it for too long. I know it sounds comfortable to plug your phone when you're going to sleep and wake up with happy 100% on screen, but seriously, if you want your friend to be strong and powerful for as long as it's possible, you should let him rest as much as you do. Taking care of environment is very important for us here at TME. That's why we recommend switching to rechargeable batteries. Every common battery you can buy, like AA, AAA or cuboidal 9 volt, has its NIMH substitute. It stands for nickel metal hydride. Thanks to usage of nickel oxide hydroxide, they tend to provide power a lot longer on one charge than alkaline equivalent. Unfortunately, NIMH batteries require a special type of charger, so make sure that you're using correct one. And never! Ever try charging disposable batteries. Putting alkaline or zinc batteries in charger can be very dangerous and cause damage or explosion. Don't do it! Of course, these are just few most common types of battery cells. There are many more of them designed for special applications. For example, if you are planning on building your own drone, you'll need magic flying batteries. Or, if you don't believe in magic, you should look for rapid discharge batteries. Every battery has something called C rating. It tells how quickly a battery can be discharged. Typically, batteries are rated at 1C. It means that a 1 amp hour cell will provide 1 ampere for 1 hour. Same battery discharging at 0.5C should provide 500 milliamps for 2 hours. In drone batteries, C rating value can go as high as up to 140 C. That's only burst rate, but it means that on a 2200 milliamp hour battery, you could pull 308 amps at the moment, which is perfect for current intensive drone motors. Now that you know various types of batteries and differences between them, it should be much easier to find a proper one that will fulfill all your needs. If you need a replacement, remember that every battery sold at TME.eu has a unique name, so just read what it says on old one and you will find new, fully charged one in no time. And remember to dispose old batteries to designated containers. Thank you and see you in the next one!